Welcome to this short video on JSON data modeling in action with the Conduit Real World Codebase. This video is a quick rundown of the modeling choices that were made in the ASP.NET Core implementation using Couchbase, highlighting both the decisions made and the alternative choices that were not made when it comes to JSON data models and how to access JSON documents in the back end. A quick review before getting into specific examples, JSON data modeling in Couchbase allows you a range of flexibility in how you model your data. Relational databases require normalization and enforce a schema in the database. With a JSON document database, you can still store data in a normalized format if you wish, but normalization is much more relaxed. You can choose when to embed and or denormalize data. This approach is partly what makes Couchbase so great at horizontal scaling, but it also has the benefit of giving you a flexible, agile place to store your data, as well as the ability to achieve performance goals with a variety of access patterns. Today I'm going to walk through the major back-end endpoints that make up the Conduit real-world implementation and the data modeling decisions within. Now, Conduit is a clone of Medium.com with a variety of endpoints that interact with users, articles, comments, and other entities. First, let's look at the user entity. Users create an account with credentials and profile information and use this to log into Conduit. After examining the Conduit spec, I like to start modeling by thinking about what the document key will be. Now, some options include username, email address, and a made up surrogate key, like a unique number or GUID. Ultimately, I decided that username would make sense since many of the endpoints call for the username in the URL or request body. For the one endpoint that doesn't, a secondary index can be used. The consequence of this design is that username cannot be easily changed since document keys are immutable. You could use a surrogate key, but given the conduit spec, this design is likely to have a negative impact on performance. Next, let's look at articles, which is the central entity of the system. Again, I start by thinking about the key. An article title informs what the slug will be, slug being the unique URL component. It might be tempting to use slug as the document key, but since title can be changed, that means slug can be changed, making it a bad choice. If we look at how sites like Stack Overflow and the real medium operate, you'll see that there's a form of surrogate key in those URLs that will not change, even when the title changes. And by the way, this prevents collisions in URLs. Two different authors can write a post with the same title, but they will be differentiated by this article key. Another important decision to point out is that the author information is not embedded into articles. This has an impact on performance since looking up the author's profile information required by the endpoint involves a second lookup operation or possibly a SQL join. But the trade-off is that the data stays consistent. There aren't copies of author profile data in articles that could get out of date. But this isn't prescriptive. If you find that the performance benefit outweighs your consistency concerns, for instance, if you know that user data doesn't change very often, a more denormalized design might be better for you. Following and favoriting is next. Following is for one user to follow another so that their articles show up in their feed. And favoriting is like giving a star or a like to an article, and in Conduit it acts like a bookmark too. Both models can be built similar to each other. Each user will have a document dedicated to their follows, which is an array of usernames, array of article keys for our favorites. There are data structure APIs present in Couchbase SDKs that can manage these arrays to, for instance, prevent duplicates from being added and making sure to use the Couchbase subdocument API so that as the array grows, subdocument operations are used to make interactions as efficient as possible. When an article is favorited, it's important to use an ACID transaction as the favorite count in the article must be updated atomically. Let's talk about tags and comments next. Tag names are put directly into articles with a nested array, something that's much more difficult to do in a relational database. Tags are restricted, like with Stack Overflow, so that new tags can only be added by an administrator. This makes tag management easier. In fact, allowed tags could just be hard-coded and only stored in articles. However, if you are building a system where tags are more freeform, storing a dedicated list of tags as they are added might be a better approach. 
Now comments are modeled similarly to favorites and following. However, comments need to have their own ID numbers to identify a comment in case of deletion. GUIDs or other unique identifiers could be used, but the conduit spec requires a numeric ID. In Couchbase, sequential ID numbers can be generated by using the increment option combined with a counter document, and therefore there's no need for an ACID transaction there. This has been a quick overview of data modeling considerations and trade-offs. If you would like to explore the real-world conduit code base in detail, visit the GitHub repo on your screen. Remember that modeling choices have an impact on performance and maintainability. The beauty of a flexible JSON model is that it's not prescriptive. You can adapt to your own needs, access patterns, and performance goals. Thanks for watching.